Hi, and welcome to this transit call on Gate, Gene Key, Hexagram, Archetype 13, The Confidant. Today, I am going to give you a bit of a shorter introduction, weaving human design, Gene Keys, and astrology, and the I Ching for Gate 13. And then we'll bring in Robert, uh, my tantric inventor, I guess I call him, but he is, he's going to introduce himself. He is so much more than that. And he is going to speak to you about the lost octave, which has to do with gate 13 through gate 66. So I just sparked the, the curiosity there. So let's start as usual with looking at the weaving of this. This is how we depict gate 13 in Unlock Your Design. It's the confidant and she can feel and hear everything between the line, everything that's ever been said. She has inner library of all the experiences that humanity has had. Um, so this archetype, the confidant, is in transit from February 2nd to February 6th. It's the gate of the listener. In the I Ching, this is the fellowship of man. And in the gene keys, the frequency band goes from discord to empathy. And the human pathway is discernment. In the I Ching, we find gate 13 in the wheel where we have the fire trigram on the bottom, which is yang, yin, yang. And all these other archetypes, gates, are also in that part of the wheel. In this specific case with the 13, we're going to have on the bottom fire and on the top we have creative heaven. So looking at it from a gene key eaching geometry, when we have fire over fire, that's the same thing as gene key 30. When we have heaven over heaven, it's the same thing as gene key 1. So we could say that the 13 is made up of those elemental trigrams that are the same as Jinky 1 and Jinky 30. So in a frequency band, the 13 in the shadow, discord is the entropy of desire. In the gift frequency, discernment is fresh light. And in the acidic frequency, empathy is the beauty of rapture. And as usual, if this is really fast for you, this is part of the archetype course that we do on the 13th with, with Unlock Your Design. So you could get this with more explanations, but we just give an overview here of weaving it. So going to astrology, we're going to have gate 13 in Aquarius, which is the revolutionary change agent. Here we have service to self-growth through the expansion of consciousness. It is fixed air. It is the 11th sign. The 11th house is the correspondence. Uh, Aquarius is the energized air of the ethers that calls our consciousness to the cosmos. And then here we're looking at in the quarter, this is the quarter of initiation, all these gates here, where the purpose is fulfilled through the mind. And you can see here that if we look at those gates, the only channel that is formed is between the 25 and the 51. And that, that is the channel of initiation. So we're here in the beginning of the year, initiating and you can also see in the hexagram structure that all these gates here have yan ying as the binary the two lines on the bottom of the hexagram and then we're looking at the human design body graph we have the 13 in the g center the shadow is me the city is oneness and the pathway is self this is like we said before the gate of the listener the other gates or gene keys that live in the G are the alpha, the spark, and the confident, love and the sensual, the feminine, the wild woman, and the natural. And what you can see here is that we have two incarnation crosses. So 7, 1, 13, and 2 are the cross of the Sphinx. And then 25, 46, 15, and 10 are the cross of the vessel of love. So those two incarnation crosses or activation sequences are going to live completely in the G center. So here we're just looking at harmonic gate, the other side of the 13. This is the channel of the prodigal. It's the design of a witness. The theme here, every cycle of experience in your life will make sense in the end. The deeper you experience this insight, the more patient and at peace you will be in the now. And what I usually always tell you here, it's really cool to see that the whole channel has a frequency band. So we are used to, in, in the Gene Keys, to speak about the frequency band for each one of the gates. But actually, we can look at the whole channel. So especially if you have this whole channel, look at this. So here we can see that when we have discord and forgetting, well, that is misery. <laughs> when we have discernment and mindfulness, 
that is evaluation. And when we have empathy and revelation, that's omnipresence. And these keywords here come from the work that Werner Pitzel and Richard Rudd did together, which is integral human design. And that's where these keywords come from. You can find them in the Living Library on the Jinky website. And here we see the programming partners. So opposite in the wheel, the 13 in Aquarius, and we have the seven in Leo. Uh, they are mirror opposites in the wheel and also mirror opposites in the structure of the hexagram. So wherever the 13 has a yang line, there's going to be a yin line in, in the seven. For each one of them, they are showing us both possibilities. And the last place we're going to, we are seeing that this is collective circuitry. So we have three types of circuitry in the body graph, individual, tribal, and collective. So this is about humanity and where we're going as humanity. What you see in pink is the logical circuit of the collective circuitry. So the patterns that we can logically understand and improve in order to move forward in a better manner. When it comes to the sensing circuit, the black and those gates jinkies that you see here, it's the abstract, it's the sensing. We have experiences and we might not be able to understand them in the moment, but when we look back and we see the abstract patterns, then we can make sense of them and we might not have to redo the same things over and over again. We can evolve that way by sensing deeply into experiences and making sense of them. And the keynote here for the whole collective circuitry is sharing, sharing with others so that we become more wise together and are able to walk forward in a more evolved way. So now I'm just going to show you to spark your uh, curiosity. So this is a graphic that uh, Rob has created where we have the brave mandala with all the gates in the order that you might be used to. And you can see here, we have the coda rings and the, the gates in the order we are used to, but then we have those weird numbers, 65 to 72, that are also part of the wheel and that you can see in the middle. So that is something that we're going to hear a little bit more about today and specifically we're going to hear about gate 66 which is you know, especially connected to gate 13. Why don't I bring you in Rob and let you use me for a dialogue if you want but you know however you want to do this however you want to speak about your discovery uh, with with people are here today. 